So I really want to take you through um, some more of the internal workings of the programming of this um, game here, uh, this Pokemon game. Now I'm going to go into the turn-based system script. Now uh, one question you might have is, well, how do we make the health bar? Now there is a health bar script, there's multiple health bar scripts, because I attach different ones to the enemy uh, and player Pokemon uh, so that I could facilitate the taking of damage here. Uh, I needed a public static variable. There are probably other ways. There are definitely other ways to do it, but uh, that was just what was most convenient at the time, was to make those just to duplicate that script, rename them, and to do it that way. And definitely not the most uh, efficient way to do it, but it you know it saved me in a pinch. And uh, you could look further uh, on YouTube uh, to see one of my other tutorials. Um, I'm not sure if it's the user interface in Unity or the beginning. Uh, beginning games in Unity 5 or something like that playlist, but there is a video already on how to make a health bar, how to make it change colors, how to do all that fancy stuff. So I really want to focus on the turn-based system, which is the core of this Pokemon game. Like I said, it's 864 or 842 lines of code. So um, these are just, uh, you know, creating the variables and initializing them. So what this is going to do, um, I want to get into this update function here. So I basically made game states, sort of like a state machine, uh, my own type of state machine. So what I did was I would make these functions, for example, player choose an attack. This is when the player chooses an attack. Attack. Attack 1 and attack 2. Those are the different uh, choices. If the player clicks that button, it's going to set that attack to be fired uh, at the enemy. Then overhead view. Well, this is when the two Pokemon are squaring off and we want to take a look at them from up top. Uh, player attack in progress. So this is while the player's attack is in progress, we're actually setting that attack particle effect active, allowing it to do its damage, bring it back. Enemy damage is actually where this damage is calculated. We're also showing the health um, decrease in the enemy. We're setting the enemy canvas to true to show all of his, their stats. Um, then the enemy is going to be attacking, so we're showing that uh, you know this this was done on a random number generator. So this is, oh no, actually the enemy attack isn't until enemy attack in progress here. So this random number here controls the enemy, chooses their first attack or their second attack. Remember it's 0 to 2 because indexing starts at 0 and random dot range is exclusive to the second number, meaning that this will go 0, 1, but it'll never hit the 2. Um, we used here an if statement and if else, and inside of these we have our switch statements. We then have player damage where the player is taking the damage. We check for the player's fainting, we check for the enemy fainting. Now like I said, this code is a little bit buggy. Uh, you know, once one Pokemon faints, it doesn't continue the battle. Um, it may just be something slight. I uh, haven't looked into it too much, like I said, uh, going back to college in a few days. So I just wanted to get all these resources out to you guys. Make sure that, you know, because I've been, I've been talking a lot about this tutorial uh, since December saying I had wanted to put it out, had wanted to put it out, and finally I had the opportunity uh, to free up some time uh, aside from college and uh, a summer internship that I was on. So now finally that I'm back and I'm back home, I was able to, you know, take a week or two and create these Pokemon to write this code. It was actually less than that. I think it was like about a week, um, you know, a week or five days uh, that I, I really uh, went into like crunch mode for this. And uh, so, just a quick description of the turn-based system. So, it's attached to an empty game object that is activated after the game state script runs, and it summons the two, the two Pokemon to begin with, meaning the player's first Pokemon, the enemy's first Pokemon. The purpose of this script is to facilitate the turn-based gameplay, where the two opposing Pokemon will take turns attacking one another, meaning that we're going to select an attack, we're going to fire that at the enemy. The enemy's going to select an attack, they're going to fire that at us. We're going to select another attack so on and so forth until one of the Pokemon faints. When a Pokemon's hit points reach zero, the Pokemon will faint and will either be replaced by a new Pokemon if there are any replacement Pokemon left in that player's team, or the player who struck the winning blow will win the Pokemon Battle video game. I want to see if there's anything else important for us to cover. So, you'll see that for things that I needed to check with this timer here, uh, I would set up this state, so a boolean variable like enemy damage, or uh, actually here, like choose, choose an attack. And then in the, the choose an attack, aside from the things I needed to call only once, if I needed to call something more than once, I would actually set choose attack to true. 
so choose an attack is false there so I set choose an attack to true actually uh, to begin with initially and then when another function is called I'll set choose attack to false and I'll set something else to true for example whatever comes after choose an attack uh, attack in progress or overhead actually so then I would set overhead to true and everything else to false so it all depends uh, wait a minute actually I think if choose an attack player choose an attack then if overhead yeah then, then the attacks in progress so we're setting choose an attack equal to false somewhere in this but basically it works um, and we call the functions within the other functions that's another key point so we're setting the overhead we're calling overhead view after this attack is chosen oh because remember uh, attack one and attack two are called when the player clicks one of the attack buttons right and then after that whenever that comes we're gonna uh, call overhead view which is then gonna lead into the next function so then in overhead view we're gonna set overhead to true and we're gonna set this camera to true but then up here in the update function we're gonna say if overhead we're adding to the timer and if the timer is greater than two then we're setting player we're calling player attack in progress and notice how I'm resetting the timer to zero in these cases because I'm using the same timer to control all these different states of the game so if you're new to unity don't worry that might have been a lot to take in uh, but I didn't want to bore any of the experienced people by you know constantly going over the same thing but definitely if you have any questions about this feel free to send me an email uh, or even better yet uh, leave it in the comments below uh, so that other people could refer to your question uh, if need be. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial series. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and please check out the other tutorial series that I have on YouTube if you enjoyed this one. Thank you.